Welcome to Overboost 39. Overboost is a podcast interview series featuring discussions with speedrunners about their history in speedrunning and gaming and the runs they're passionate about. Uh, I am your host, PMC Trilogy, and with me today is Emray. Emray, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, I'm happy to be here. No, I'm I'm excited because I I like to start off these with with current events. And, you know, when I interview the guest each week, I usually sort of lurk in their stream a lot the week beforehand. And so I was lurking a little bit in your stream this week, and I noticed that you were uh, one of the people, and I'd seen multiple people tweet about this game, uh, Blue Fire, uh, but you were one of the people who's been working on, on Blue Fire stuff. Um, I think particularly yesterday I saw you doing like a, like a 100% kind of, of run. Uh, and so I wanted to ask, you know, starting off with current event stuff, you know, how did you, how did you come to learn about this game? And, uh, and also just like, just maybe give a quick summary of it for people who don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, Blue Fire, I would describe it as if Zelda were an actual 3D platformer. So to me, it feels very hat in time, but with like zelda mechanics they have like zelda dungeons and like the mechanics are similar like you have to get keys throughout the dungeons etc um so it's really cool <laughs> um but the developers actually approached me directly um and asked me to try out their demo and the demo was really cool so like there's there's like a water temple and the demo was basically the first starting area and then you move on to uh that dungeon later in the demo so we had already like figured out a lot of different skips in that dungeon. So that's been really fun to play with, like in the actual game. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we found some really crazy stuff. Like literally overnight, we found a skip where you can like die in a loading zone and go straight to the final boss. So the eighty <laughs> percent run is now like thirty five minutes. It's insane. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wait, how long has this been? How long has the game been out? Because I know you talked uh, about playing the demo, but... Yeah, last Thursday, I think okay. it came out. So we've already found, like, a bunch of huge skips in the meantime. Uh, we're discussing an NMG route. I'm usually an NMG runner. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm routing 100% NMG. Uh, I think most people probably know me from Hollow Knight, 112% NMG and stuff like that. So that, that's pretty much, like, my history in speedrunning. I really like these long, complex categories. No, I think that's that's a good way of putting it. I, I have I've had a similar experience recently where I usually am the sort of person who runs old junk games and now I'm getting into some indie games and I'm having that revelation of like, well, I like what these games are doing. I don't want to just skip to the end, <laughs> you know. I want to do a little bit <laughs> yeah. more hang out in them. So I definitely uh relate to that. So you, you said your your primary interest is these uh longer, more complex categories. Um you know, and so do you expect that to be your focus then is, is improving and routing this 100% no major glitches kind of category? I realize that the exact naming might change, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we started a vote literally last night um, trying to determine what we're going to consider a major glitch or a minor glitch. So we're not going to have a glitchless category for that game in particular. Um, we're, we're just trying to figure out, like, what is our limit as a community? Like, where are we drawing the line? Um but I, I really like NMG categories because you get to do a lot of stuff that's mostly intended, but fast with a lot of cool skips in between. And being an indie game, one of the great things about being in an indie community is that like we have a good relationship with the devs mm -hmm. and we have a direct line of contact with the devs and we can work with them in determining like what is healthy for the speedrun community because what's healthy for the speedrunning community is in the end great for devs because we get to showcase those games right right and that brings sales for them have they responded yet and i know everything's so fresh have they had any sort of response to any of these big glitches that the community has found <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, there's there's a couple of things that we've labeled not safe for devs. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a couple of glitches that uh, they probably will end up patching. But there are certain glitches such as like moon jumping, uh, which is a very minor type of glitch. You basically like get a normal height jump off of a wall in a way that you aren't intended to normally. Um, that sort of stuff, they, they really like it being in the run and they don't foresee patching that sort of thing. So the devs really are interested in preserving a lot of things that are beneficial. 
That's great. I mean, that's just that's great to hear. I feel like that's also one of the the pitches too to to speed running indie games is that you know compared to I don't know I could name any developer Rockstar Nintendo whoever you know you're not going to have that that mutually beneficial sort of relationship that you will with with an indie dev. Um, I mean, hopefully that you do have with an indie dev. So that's that's good to hear. Now with with a game like Blue Fire that's just come out, I guess there's. It's just the Wild West right now. Because I, I was trying to think of a question. Like, normally, if a game had been out for a few months, I would ask something like, you know, is there an expansion pack coming or anything like that? But I imagine at this point, it's too fresh for any announcements like that, right? We actually do have a lot of good information coming. Uh, the developers are working on an in-game timer similar to, like, Houghton Time has. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably what we're going to base the speedrun on eventually. Um, so they are working on things that they're going to be adding to the game that will be helpful for speedrunning. Hopefully that speedrun uh, mod that they're working on will also include um, like cutscene skipping and things that don't exist in the normal base game. And they're also talking about adding a dev-supported randomizer. So Ooh. they're really interested in like uh, activity within the community uh, and replayability and things like that. That's really cool. You know, I, I feel like I've had it a few times now where, uh, you know, I mean, and you see this on our speedrun or other resources where a developer shows up and they're like, oh, how can I make my my game great for speedrunning? Usually my first response is, I mean, I, I hate to, you know, I, <laughs> I hate to bring the bad news, but you need to make a, a game that people want to replay over and over again first. Um, but if you are, if you do that, you know, there are all these things that you can do. And I think what well, you just said, when you know, with the in-game timer stuff, uh, I've, there's another game I'm working on, Umarangi Generation, uh, where very much the same thing is happening, where like the next big patch is going to have in-game timer and, you know, modes to enable different categories of runs and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's, that's exciting. You know, I, 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 yeah. I am eager, you know, I, I worry sometimes when you see a flurry of activity in a new game. I, I wonder how far that's going to carry out in terms of there being continued activity. Um, it certainly seems like the developer is playing to support things. Do you feel like Blue Fire has the sort of skill ceiling? Because I feel like skill ceiling is usually what defines a, a speedrun game that causes people to stick around. Do you feel like Blue Fire has that? I think that it could. It's really early to say right now. Mm -hmm. So it's it's hard to tell like how far we can actually go. Um, but I definitely think so. There's nothing that's super technical, like say like Celeste or anything like that. Um, but my experience in Hollow Knight, uh, it's, it's about the same level of technicality is what it feels like to me. Like it's, it's going to have a decently high school ceiling, but not like, uh, <laughs> you have to break your hands to play sure. this game kind of thing. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Celeste is certainly a, a special sort of example when it comes to, yeah. <laughs> to the skill ceiling, no doubt about that. Uh, all right. Well, we, we talked about something fresh. Let's let's go back in time. Let's go to uh, the very very beginning. I love to ask, where does gaming start from you? How did that enter into your life? Oh goodness, I have so many great stories. Okay, please. So, uh, I was when I was a wee little girl. I was three years old or something, and my mom had the the neighbors babysit me, and they had an NES, and I played it for five hours, <laughs> and then my mom was like, "Oh, she really likes this," so they got me a SNES uh, with Killer Instinct, Super Metroid, uh, a couple of other games like that. I don't really remember, but I mostly remember Killer Instinct and Super Metroid. Mm -hmm. I loved those games, and I played the heck out of them as a kid. Uh, later, I got into N64, and the Banjo series and Zelda Ocarina of Time are the two games that stand the most out to me from that era. Um, and then the way I started out with speedrunning, oh, I've told this story. I love this because I didn't know that speedrunning existed until t until 2015. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever I was like 16 or so years old, I used to run The Lion King. Uh, with my my computer timer <laughs> oh. on emulator and uh, my pv was like 23 minutes and whenever i found out about it i looked up what the lion king world record was and it was like 13 minutes and i was like <laughs> oh my god because <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i felt like i did really good but like <laughs> well that's, that's the classic though right I, I feel like you know that that story i've heard so many people tell but it was smash or something like that right like i was the best yeah. on one of my friends in halo and then i went to a local tourney and it didn't turn out well for me yeah <laughs> 
So mm-hmm. it sounds like you were you were mostly uh, you know Nintendo growing up. Was it just Nintendo stuff? Was it just SNES and sixty four until until later? Or? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I would have really loved to play stuff like Spyro, but I never owned my own PlayStation. Um, I played through Spyro 1 at like a friend's house or something, and I, I really loved it. So getting to play SRT whenever the remake came out was really exciting. But gaming overall has been like a really important part of my life. I, I spent a lot of time... Um, like, because I, I mean, I haven't really had the greatest life overall, so mm-hmm. gaming to me was like an escape and a comfort zone and something that I could share with people who had that common interest. No, absolutely. I, 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 the fact that, you know, we're still doing it now, I think speaks to (laughs) the, the positive impact and the the community aspect as well. Here's a, here's a milestone question. I, I like to ask when I'm trying to gauge someone's history with gaming, could you pinpoint a, a, a particular moment when you would have taken ownership of, uh, you know, your your gaming hobby, and when I ask that, what I mean is, you know, instead of being something that was maybe, uh, a, a, you know, a gift or or something like that that you would have gotten from from family, for example, uh, instead, you know, you got your first job and you saved up money and you bought your own computer or bought, you know, a console or something like that. Do you feel like there's a point when you took ownership of the gaming hobby in your life? Ah. Uh- I don't know. I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. So I'm like, just uh, so an example for me would be, you know, for me, I feel like the first time I really had my own space for gaming uh, when I was 15, I had a summer job and I took all the money, the, all the money from the whole summer and bought a gaming laptop and that was, you know, kind of my thing rather than something that I had to share with a sibling or, you know, was like a family computer. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I basically always had my own my own gaming mm-hmm. things. Like, uh, I, I was an only child, mm-hmm. and then whenever whenever I was adopted, whenever I was eight years old, I uh, my step parents got me my own N sixty four, and my stepsister had the PlayStation, which is why I never had a PlayStation. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that's how that ended up working out. But um, like the first console that I've actually ever bought on my own was the Switch very recently. Okay. So I mean, I haven't, I haven't actually bought too many consoles myself. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the 3DS. I forgot about the 3DS existing because it's the 3DS. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! What did you get a 3DS for then? Come on, there's good games for the 3DS. I- I got it for, honestly, for Pokemon Black White. Pokemon okay. Black White was the game that got me back into the Pokemon series after mm-hmm. a while. Oh, that, okay. That's actually maybe a good uh, a good question. Because I was going to ask, um, you know, I can't ask about, you know, did you play Hollow Knight back in the day? Because obviously Hollow Knight is a more recent title. But uh, what what is your kind of pre speedrunning relationship with with Pokemon? Was it something that you had played like like Blue and Red, or uh, what 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 generations did you play when they back back before? The only generation that I did not play on release was Generation Four. Mm. I have been playing Pokemon since it first came out. I remember the neighbor boy got the Pokemon Blue because he loved Blastoise, and I got Pokemon Red because I love Charizard, and then I still to this day love Charizard. <laughs> He's still my favorite. Um, but yeah, it, it started then, and then like with other friends determining which game we were going to buy was always really exciting. Um, and Generation 4 came out whenever I was in high school, so mm-hmm. I, I was trying to focus on studies and things like that, so I just kind of skipped out on it. And... Uh, then Pokemon Black came out, and Pokemon Black, in my opinion, has the most powerful story in all of Pokemon writing. It's beautiful. It actually made me question the way that I play the game. Like, do I actually want to catch these Pokemon and box them? I feel kind of guilty. Like, maybe Inn is right. <laughs> you know? I So I've only, I, myself, I've only played, I think, now, like, 1, 2, 4, and 6. And at, on release, I really only played 1 and, and 4, but I have heard that about about black and white i, re- I remember I, I had an experience of going to a, a pokemon there was a pokemon or- orchestra tour i think a few years back and uh, i overheard someone talking about like that song from black and white you know that's got real meaning you know please understand yeah. the lyrics <laughs> so <laughs> i definitely i've definitely overheard that um that's interesting okay so so four was the only one that you had skipped and uh but otherwise 
you've kept up with it, you know, and, and that applies even now, you know, even as something like Sword and Shield comes out. Yeah, exactly. I still play a pretty heavy role in the Switch speedrunning community. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a moderator in the Discord, and uh, I do act as a leader in both the 3DS and Switch community servers and things like that. Like, So I do still care deeply about the Pokemon community, even though I don't actively really run Pokemon anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, from there, a okay, so here's another gaming background question, because we're going to be focused primarily on single-player games, because that's what you speed run for the most part. Uh, but I do like to ask, uh, have you had uh, big phases with any kind of multiplayer games? And then that could be, you know, stuff that you play, you know, couch co-op, fighting games, whatever, or it could be, you know, different internet games. It could be your, your League of Legends, MOBAs, WoW, anything like that. There was an era that I was deep into Super Smash Brothers Melee. Actually, it's funny that you mentioned that earlier. Um, between, I believe, 2012 and 2015, like that was basically the precursor to me finding out about speedrunning. I found out about speedrunning because of GDQ from a Melee friend, actually. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of like the transition for me. As soon as I found out about speedrunning, I was like, well, fighting games, heck fighting games. I'd rather uh, focus on improving just myself versus myself. Now, I, I have to ask that. Who did you play? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a Marth and Puff main. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I made Puff. <laughs> I, look, I'm going to be honest. I, I had never really played Smash too much competitively myself. Most of my friends were very much into Marvel versus Capcom, so kind of on the more traditional and big heavy quotes side of fighters uh smash is a fine yeah. fighting game it's fun to watch uh but i i don't know i i've always watched enjoyed watching um god who's the the, pop, the hungry box is that the yeah okay hungry box. i don't know i've always found all that very entertaining if, like more so than fox i'd rather watch puff than fox i don't yeah. know if that's a hot take but it probably is a hot take. Uh, I'm originally from New Orleans, so we mm. had a really hot scene. We have a couple of pro players that are from New Orleans, including some that were top pro players at a certain point. Mm. Um, one of them is pretty well known as teaming with MTK during the Brawl days. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, we, we had a pretty active scene because of that, which is how I ended up getting involved in it. Cool, cool. No, I'm, uh, Mewtwo King gets around. I, I'm from the, I'm from from Jersey, which I believe Mewtwo King is from Jersey, and I have encountered more than a few stories in the wild of Mewtwo King showed up to my house and bodied everyone. You know, <laughs> so it just it happens, I guess, and if you're of yeah. a certain certain age. So, um, you said that it was Smash that uh, led you to learning about speed running, um. How did you first? When I say speed running here, obviously you you had the story about running Lion King with your timer, so you were already <laughs> you know doing it on your own. But like capital S speed running, you know through GDQ. Yeah. How did you first learn about that? So uh, we were all hanging out. Uh, we were going to be playing Smash later, and GDQ happened to be going on, mm -hmm. and there was a Banjo Kazooie run, and like I mentioned, I was I was really into the Banjo series. And it was Stiv's run, I believe, in 2015. I think it might have been SGDQ. I'm not 100%. Sure. Um, but I uh, I sat down and I watched that, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I I miss Banjo. <laughs> so <laughs> I started running banjo Tui, and uh, I, I became a huge fan of PG. And if you don't know, PG and I have been dating for three years at this point, three and a half years. Um, so I ended up meeting him through that community as well. So I'm, I'm really glad that I got into Banjo speedrunning immediately after that. That's neat. So uh, that's really, I don't know, I, that speaks further to community, right? I mean, clearly, you, you know, you can meet some good people through speedrunning. I feel like mm -hmm. that's <laughs> hopefully a message to be taken away from that. Um, so, all right. So you, you started with, with Banjo speedrunning, um, well, so is that fair to say that in terms of like recording and maybe sharing on YouTube or Twitch that that Banjo Tooie was then your first speedrun shared in that manner? No, oh, no. I um, it it actually it's pretty complicated. I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure what you're comfortable with talking about on the podcast. Okay, um, but there there was a long period where I actually hid my both my gender and my identity. Okay, um, because at the time the banjo community was very very boys club mm -hmm. and 
there there was a lot of things going on um, behind the scenes and a lot of people that are in the community probably know exactly what I'm talking about um, with sexism and things like that and locker room jokes and so I kept my identity private I never recorded I never posted mm -hmm. um, I would help new runners if I saw them like asking questions in a chat or something like that um, but people were mostly just like, who's this person? Why does she know that? <laughs> or, uh, why do they know that? Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's understandable. I mean, that's, you know, this is, I don't know if I'm the right person to, to be, to, to come away with some sort of statement from that, but you know, the, the work of making communities more inclusive is necessary and vital. And, you know, we're, no matter how big or small your community is like, always put that as the the load star uh i tend to be the ca a caretaker for a bunch of practical ghost towns uh, in terms of speed running and even there you know i will try to do things you know i'll try to get rid of bad actors so big or small you know doing that is going to create room for good people to come in that might otherwise see a boys club and not want to be involved uh, so you know exactly. I, I will i will put that out there at least i think is a pretty a pretty safe bet um, all right, well, let's, let's do some, let's do some speed running takes then. I'm going to ask some questions, trying to get individual speed run takes. Uh, what would you say out of all of the speed runs that you have done, uh, is your favorite speed run? Definitely Hollow Knight because there's so many different categories and each category has like its own uh, pros and cons like, okay, this one has this extremely difficult trick but gets to do a lot of really fun stuff or uh, this one is a lot more rewarding to run or, uh, you know, different things about the routing that makes the run more interesting compared to a different category. It's just a really well-designed game. And because of that, it's a lot of fun to like even come up with meme categories. Like we we have an entire meme leaderboard now, with like uh, strange like goals and stuff. Like we have a Zote percent run where you like you save Zote twice to go beat him up in Kahlo, and then that's how the run ends. <laughs> like, it's really fun. It, you know, it's really neat to me having now interviewed a few people to see. Uh, the games that generate such uh, interest and devotion behind them that they arrive at this point where they necessitate a category extensions board, right? That, that has categories like that. Um, do you, I, maybe you said this and I missed it. Uh, do you feel like you have a favorite category in Hollow Knight? Definitely 112%, just because it's the category that I've put the most into. Um, there, not only is it a 100% category, but at the very end, you have to do a solid hour of boss rushes. And to me, that feels very rewarding to get really good at. And I, I really love combat in video games. And I think that goes back to the fact that I grew up with Super Metroid and Killer Instinct. I ended up really liking fighting mm -hmm. in video games because of that. So uh, to me, that just feels like the most rewarding aspect. No, that makes sense. I mean, I, I think that makes sense too. Uh, when I had asked you for, you know, one of the things I do in preparation for an interview is I ask a guest for a few VODs to take notes on and study. And one of the ones that you had relayed to me was this this Pantheon 5. And I've never played Hollow Knight. So I was like, well, what, what does this mean? And, and so you know, I looked it up and it was a... Uh, I guess if I use the term right, a boss rush from uh, yeah. this final DLC for Hollow Knight, which you know, done as a speedrun category. Yeah, so that uh, is basically the the fifth out of four different pantheons. The first four cover all of the bosses separately, and then Pantheon of Five, you have to do all of them back to back. Um, I'm actually going to be running that soon again. Uh, the Hollow Knight community is having a showcase on the official Twitch channel, Hollow Knight Community. I believe it's called. And uh, we're doing that to celebrate Hollow Knight's fourth birthday. We're going to be showcasing all of the main categories uh, from select runners in the community. And then we're going to be doing a 106% relay race, showcasing a lot of different people. So that's going to be really exciting. That's really cool, especially to be doing it on the... I mean, you said it's Hollow Knight's official Twitch channel, right? Yeah, no, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight community. It's basically okay. our speedrunning okay. official okay. channel. I wanted to make sure I understood. It was, was it the communities yeah. or was it the, the the developer? No, but I mean, still, still really neat. Like to to have the basis of that community that you have your own Twitch channel and all that work because the things like that channel and the event and all that 
they're you know a labor of love by the community and so to see that manifest you know is, is certainly indicative of the the effort behind it just to throw it out there too uh the person specifically who decided to organize this and put it all together is a very young member of the community and i really really respect that he went through all of that trouble to do that he's i think he's only like 15 or 16 years old and he cares so much about the community that he went through the effort to do that that's really cool yeah, yeah. i <laughs> shout, shout outs to that i to be to involve yourself and to you know I don't know, make it happen. Like that's just, it's a lot of work. I, I can, yeah. I can only imagine doing that. And also uh, I'm assuming, but as, you know, being in school and having to deal with, with other obligations as well. Um, all right, well, let's do something a little more lighthearted then of all the speed runs that you have done. What is your least favorite? And I want to, I want to emphasize least favorite in that, like you tried it and you're not interested in it or it's not enjoyable for you. This is not, you know, dunking on the community involved. It's just not a speed run that that's really your, your style. I have run a lot of games, a lot of which aren't even on speedrun.com. Mm -hmm. Um, because I almost never submit runs. I'm one of those people that's really horrible about actually <laughs> putting my runs on a leaderboard. <laughs> um, actually, like half of my Hollow Knight PVs aren't even my actual PVs. Mm. Um, but let's see. Uh, least favorite run. I'm trying to look at the games on my desktop. <laughs> oh, no, take your time. Take your time. Usually, I see. It, I was wondering that when I looked at your speedrun.com profile because I, I felt like there were definitely more runs that you had done than were necessarily submitted here. And there are all sorts of valid reasons for that. You know, I didn't. I, so that, that's that's totally fine. Submitting, yeah. taking the time to submit is is also work. Um, I, I After looking at it, I think it would probably be Time Spinner. I got into Time Spinner. I thought the game was kind of cool. Um, and then once I started learning the speedrunning, they found a, a, a strat called uh, Risky Boozing because it was found by Risky CB, uh, where you have to do like this really precise mechanical backdash. And that's like the, the movement. And it was just absolutely not. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it's really demanding on your hands. And I ended up just putting it down and never going back. No, that's a pretty good reason. I, that's that's something I would wonder. I mean, I guess with a game like Time Spinner, so there's a mechanic that comes up. You don't like it. You don't want to do it. Is it possible to have a category that gets rid of something like that, or was it just too specific to you to be like, oh, I'll do this category without out it, or it wasn't worth it to do it? Uh, not, not really, because it's not really a glitch. It's kind of like the Castlevania games where, like, backdashing is usually the fastest movement. It's just that in Time Spinner, it was a lot more physically technical to actually do it. So I don't think that the community would actually do, uh, bother making it a separate category. No, that's fair, because I, I, yeah, I mean, we already had the discussion about no major glitches, about how sometimes they find something and you don't want to do it, but I can see that if it's going to be a funnel mechanic probably at, at every point along the way you know plenty plenty of games out there uh how about a game that you would like to speed run uh but for either time reasons or just because it doesn't fit with what you're doing right now you haven't gotten around to it yet i want to run super metroid the Super Metroid runners want me to run Super Metroid. <laughs> Kip sent me so much information. He was so excited when he found out I was interested, but I just, I haven't had the time. Like, Super Metroid is a heavy game to learn. There's a lot of strats, a lot of tech, a lot of things to learn. So it'll it'll take a while if I ever decide to take that on. Now, is there a particular category? Because I... I'm I'm not too familiar with Super Metroid, but I imagine with a, with a game that has as devoted a fan base as that, there are probably lots of different ways to run Super Metroid. I would definitely do a hundred percent. As as always, I like those max percent categories. I like complex categories where you get to do a lot of the game. Um, and any percent, I usually don't run any percents because any percent categories they're they're usually short and a lot more optimized, which to me feels like kind of stressful like because i feel like I, I can't keep up and that kind of wears on my my mentality um 
And a hundred percent, I feel like I can take my time because there's there's always like, okay, I messed up this segment, but I have a lot to save at this other segment. And there's a lot more that you can personally improve throughout the run rather than just constantly failing one segment or something like that. Yeah, there's a lot more to break it down. I also I feel like what's nicer about those sort of longer categories too is that um you get to just be in the flow for a while. Like when you're playing it, you get to just absorb that information. I, I like for the first time I recently did a speed run that was like five minutes long and I was like, this ain't <laughs> it chief. I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, th there is a category at holiday where you get to do path of pain, which is like a really intense platforming section. I tried to run that once and I was just like, no, cause the, the world record I think is two Oh seven or something like that. Two minutes. Oh seven. So it's a really short, technically heavy category, and uh, no, <laughs> short categories are not for me. Yeah, no. I, I as soon as I feel like I'm getting into it, it's up oh, runs over, and well, that's that's <laughs> the end of that. How about a favorite speed run to watch that you do not run yourself and you don't plan to run yourself? Ooh, don't plan to run myself. Uh, I've recently fallen in love with the Dark Souls series. Um, Dark Souls 3 is something that I do plan to run, but mm -hmm. I've also been consequently watching a lot of Bloodborne. I don't think that I'll ever mm -hmm. run Bloodborne, but I do really love the those FromSoft games. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit over here and cry in Armored Core for a little bit every time I hear <laughs> that, but it's okay. I understand. Um, who I, just I'm just curious who do you uh, who do you watch that does uh, Bloodborne runs? I mean, if you're, uh, mostly, if you're okay mentioning their names, I don't... <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, mostly Eat an Issue. Um, some of my friends in the Dark Souls community that I've made recently, uh, Caprices, Fudge Cow, uh, a couple of other people that are really active in Dark Souls 3 glitchless, because they just uh, they just uh, made a glitchless category for both all bosses at any percent. Um, because for a while, like they had things like Fair and Keep Skip, where they have to do this weird camera glitch Um and stuff like that. So they making a glitchless category made it a lot more accessible to new runners who don't have to learn these huge glitches. Um, and then uh, they ended up hosting these Bloodborne runners. Mm -hmm. I, Eden Issues, the only one I can think of off the top mm -hmm. of my head right now. Um, but he's, he's a really comfy stream. I like it. All right. Well, those are some good takes. I like that. I like that last one, especially. I, I, I had... Um... I had Catalyst on a while back uh, from from the Souls community, but I would really love to have more. So I feel like I'm I'm almost like eager to you know, get other people to do my job for me, trying to find people to talk to. Um, all right. So earlier on, when it came to uh, speedrunning and streaming, you mentioned that really you had not uh, recorded yourself, you know, put your face out there on Twitch or anything for for a while. Um, would you be able to discuss uh, the point when you decided to start making a more active effort to stream? Yeah, so um, I actually didn't start streaming with speedrunning. I, I was running Banjo-Tooie, and I also messed with Ocarina of Time 3D a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but during that time, I was a Shiny Hunter streamer on Twitch. Oh. And was for like about a year and a half. And then I was like, you know what? What if instead of Shiny Hunting, I actually speedrun Pokemon X and Pokemon X was my first like really serious speed game where I was streaming, I was posting runs, people uh, were discussing strats and I was involved in that and things like that. So I, I, outside of Banjo-Tooie and Ocarina of Time, I think that that was like my first real situation in a speedrunning community. Now, just for for the for the elderly speedrunners like me, can you just confirm what shiny hunting is for me and for anyone else? <laughs> uh, shiny hunting is whenever you do something to reset over and over until you get a Pokemon that is shiny. Okay. And the odds of getting a shiny is very very low. Starting in generation six, it was basically one in four thousand. So uh, there are ways to lower that to like one in 1,000 or something more reasonable, mm -hmm. but it's still 
pretty still, yeah yeah <laughs> pretty still pretty yeah, yeah. It, i mean that's that's still a really popular thing on twitch too so and i still have a lot of friends in the the casual pokemon community and some of them actually did come over to speedrunning for example josh the fourth gen gamer mm-hmm. he started out as a shiny hunter and then he started getting into more competitive aspects of pokemon that ended up leading him into speedrunning and now he's also a leader in the pokemon speedrunning community that's kind of one of the cool things about about Pokemon. As I, I said, I've only played a, a few few gens of Pokemon myself, but I do love that the the game structure enables all these different approaches, which are all popular and fun. And it's <laughs> it's neat to see just uh, you know the competitive battling or speed running or you know shiny hunting. And I'm sure there's more that I don't even know about. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> there's there's a lot of ways to play the game, and I think that that's why it is so popular. All right, I have a a very specific streaming question uh, because when I was watching your stream this week, I noticed that I think you do something uh, that I also do and that I haven't seen too many other people do, which is that you, um, I think the filter's not quite exactly grayscale, but you definitely (laughs) dull some of the colors on your camera. Um, What's the history behind that? Uh, <laughs> is there any history? Do you it's, just like it? It's, it's really not that deep. I'm just okay. edgy and I don't like color. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm an emo kid. It's who I am. <laughs> no, that's fair. I, I You know, I, I've been doing that for, for a few years and I, I attribute that to a streamer I used to watch uh, named Puri Puri. Uh, who, when, when he said why he did it, it was because he wanted to make the gameplay pop instead of uh, his own camera and i was like i kind of like that and eventually i just kind of stuck every once in a while i ask my community like do you want do you want to see me in color on the regular and they're like no <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like all right fine <laughs> well then that, that, that'll be that uh but i was maybe curious I'll, yeah go ahead uh, maybe i'll i'll start using that as an excuse <laughs> i want to make the gameplay pop <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it. sure. Whatever you know, whatever you whatever you want to say, for sure. Um, so, was there a a point when you feel like streaming? Uh, I mean, maybe it was the shiny streaming. Maybe it was something else where uh, you developed more of an audience. Was there a particular turning point there? Uh, so I, my history with streaming is very deep. Um, so I I started in 2017, and here's what happened. Um, July of 2016, I started to first have symptoms of my autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I used to have a really good job. I used to manage a Domino's, um, which I mean, most people might not consider that a really good job, but I had great pay, great insurance. Like I was covered. I I was fine. And I eventually had to step down and I became a driver and uh, started to take on less and less hours because I couldn't work like Mm. I used to. And... uh, so in 2016 i took everything out of my savings and bought a 3ds capture card Mm -hmm. and i basically gambled that on my success Mm -hmm. and i started streaming part-time alongside of working trying to trying to make ends meet because i couldn't work as much as i used to and uh i was very very lucky i acknowledge how lucky i was because uh i was near partner numbers in may following that um mm, near okay. around the time that the affiliate program rolled out and uh then uh, a lot of personal things happened i had to stop streaming for a couple of months and then i ended up having to build back up after that um but that was the first time i had applied for partner mm-hmm. um but I basically it's been kind of up and down since then it was only really recently that um I, I feel like i've stabilized you know like mm-hmm. I, I feel like i'm finally at a comfortable place in uh streaming where i can i can take care of myself and i feel like i have the community around me to keep me keep me afloat you know yeah i mean that's that's interesting i I feel like already you know some of those things uh yeah i'm just i don't know i'm glad i'm glad it worked out for you in in the way that it did uh you know especially the experience of being in in america you know everything yeah. about that is just stressful more more than it needs to be the experience of life and being in america um yeah and you know all the technology parts of it too i mean three like 3ds capture cards that by itself you know to the exclusion of all of the other issues you know is already uh, a minefield so um but yeah 
I mean, here we are for, for, for better or worse. So I'm, I'm glad that's good. Well, you know, you, you brought up something I'm going to, you brought up health issues. I wanted to just zero in on a very specific thing because I know you play some games that do require some, uh, you know, you know, specific inputs. I do like to ask about, uh, things like wrist and hand health. Uh, do you do anything in regards to that when it comes to, you know, sessions of playing games like Hollow Knight or, or you know, Blue Fire? No, honestly. <laughs> like, mm. um, I know that it's something that a lot of other Pokemon speedrunners do struggle with. For example, Pulse Effects is probably the most notable example of this. He has such severe hand issues that um, he, he has to wear compression gloves, and he's also started doing less actual Pokemon speedrunning um, because it's so demanding on him. There's also a Hollow Knight runner named Scurry who has wrist and hand issues related to gaming. Um, but personally, I, I'm lucky in that way too. I don't really have any any type of hand issues or anything like that. Um, I <laughs> like I kind of feel like my autoimmune disease kind of helps me in this mm -hmm. way because my hands are like partially numb. So I can just okay. like autopilot shake my hand and I don't even feel the mashing. <laughs> Huh. So I can mash for like extended periods without even having it impact me. So I I feel like that way I'm kind of lucky with the condition that I have. It does help. That's I mean that's interesting. <laughs> I I would not have I would I mean I guess there's a, I, is that a silver lining? Is it okay to call yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would call it that. Okay. Well, maybe on that on that subject of of tactile inputs, uh especially given your upbringing as uh, a primarily a uh, Nintendo player, uh, I did want to get controller takes. Uh, do you have favorite and least favorite controllers? This is my Phantom Magenta uh, Xbox One controller. I love this. Mm. I love this controller. Um, the Xbox controller feels really good in my hands because I, I have pretty small hands. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I don't know. The the spacing of the buttons feels really good. I'm not a big fan of the DualShock. Uh, Switch controller also feels a little bit fat. Um, I haven't really used a whole lot of controllers other than that. Like I grew up a lot with the N64, so the N64 controller feels really comfortable. But the three prong thing, I can understand people complaining about. That's valid. <laughs> so I feel like usually if I, if I ask this question of a like a certain sort of age range i was really expecting some sort of there there is only loving or hating the gamecube controller i don't know if you had the uh it was, maybe you do because of smash do you have a gamecube controller opinions i do i love the gamecube controller okay. i actually whenever i was in the smash community i used to mod them i wish that i had it next to me i'd show you um i i made a uh a galaxy plate with like galaxy print on the 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 controller and that's the only one i still have left mm -hmm. but the the gamecube controller is probably up there as one of the best controllers but for modern modern gaming i really love the xbox one controller yeah i think i would probably agree with that i think of of um i mean i guess modern gaming maybe i can't maybe i can't say that new consoles just came out i have no idea what those i have yet to see a ps5 except through someone's webcam on a stream so i don't know if it's actually <laughs> real i've heard good things about it but it, it looks like it might be a little more comfortable than mm. the dual shot, but I, I haven't gotten to see one in person either yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Uh, but no, I, I think I, I think I generally agree with that. That the the Xbox, well, especially on account of being uh, lighter, like I don't, I don't, you know, I would say like my hands are pretty average size. I have always, I've had, a, I, I play piano, and so I've for years have had an inferior complex and not about not being able to casually play like twelfths on a keyboard. Does is that does that have meaning if I say twelfths to you? Uh, I, it sounds familiar. Okay. I do have a little bit of musical training, but okay. it's a very long time ago. It's just, you know, it's just referring to like an interval, you know, between you know, like, like an octave, you know, from C to C is eight. And so, you know, you can just okay. expand from there. Um, I see. And, yeah. So, you know, it's like, oh, my hands are never big and my hands are probably fine, you know, but it's just like, I can't <laughs> do this freakish thing on piano. But, um, uh, but no, it's, it's interesting with, with hand size and controller. I know my, my partner very much loves specifically the switch light <laughs> and is like, uh, switch pro controller. That's too big. Just give me the little, <laughs> little handheld jobber. Uh, oh and that'll goodness. be fine. But I also have another friend who loves the OG Xbox controller. 
um which oh my goodness that thing is a brick <laughs> yeah that's that's too big much too big yeah all right um oh here's okay so when it comes to uh you know people who are doing speed run uh, content on the internet in in 2020 now 2021 uh, especially if you are you're thinking about it from the perspective of how best to grow an audience one of the things that i feel like is is rapidly becoming a cliche is do youtube content youtube is more discoverable uh, and this and that and um i mean i'm guilty of this because part of why i started doing a speedrun interview co podcast was to put something on YouTube. So like, I'm 100% guilty of this. Uh, I also noticed that uh, you had something, since I had followed you on Twitter, that you were working on, uh, which is this escort mission series. Um, can you tell people what that is and what led you to start doing it? Um, so escort mission, uh, I'm kind of on hold right now. I'm mm -hmm. taking a bit of a break to handle a bunch of stuff in the meantime. Um, but basically what it is is a show where people... Uh, basically guide me through their speed game and I'm completely blind so that's why it's called escort mission because they're like escorting me through their their route um, it's been a lot of fun so far it's just something that I came up with and decided to do and it would also let me get to experience experience a lot of other speed games that I wouldn't normally play um, so yeah I, I mean it's it's definitely been a uh, a cool idea and i would like to continue it eventually um and yeah i do agree with um the youtube content i hate it i hate to admit it because i hate youtube <laughs> but it, it's true like there there have been i don't know if you know who fireborn is uh fireborn has recently blown up on youtube uh he's probably one of the largest if not the largest hollow knight po or mm -hmm. hollow knight speedrunner um on youtube and uh, there was a route that I did uh, for the any percent guide achieve for the achievement, and uh, he basically made a better video on that and directed people to my video and said, "Hey, go follow Imre. She actually routed this." And I still to this day get people from that who end up finding me on on Twitch later. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that is really important for yeah. growth. No, it, it absolutely is. I, it's it's. <laughs> I think it's so surprising, um, and like YouTube, period, right? Like it doesn't even have to be your own YouTube channel. I think probably as as both of us being speedrunners who who stream and watch other people, uh, it is very common for someone who has a well received GDQ run to just for for the rest of their streaming time, someone comes in and is like, oh hey, I saw your GDQ run on YouTube, and now I'm here. Yeah, exactly. I, I definitely still get that too, because I've done GDQ Hotfix uh, for Hollow Knight, and I got to do three different runs at the beginning of last year for Frame Fatales, mm. including uh, the Pokemon Shield finale, and a lot of people still do come in from those. All right, so I wanted to... You, you hinted earlier that uh, you're involved in the I think you said the, the Pokemon Switch and 3DS uh, like speedrun... Uh, organizing right yeah i'm i'm a moderator in both the the switch and 3ds servers and mm -hmm. i now moderate uh the leaderboards for both of the generation six games yeah so i i always like to highlight this sort of labor because i feel like especially there's a lot of uh, what i would say uh needlessly inflammatory discourse about leaderboards but at the same time it is it is work uh, and you know, I want to highlight that work. How did you end up getting into uh, doing moderation? I mean, I, I think it sounds like Pokemon is something you're involved in, but also if you want to highlight other, uh, you know, other games that you might be involved in moderation with, um, how did you get into doing that? So uh, there, I have a very long history of trying to both mediate and call out um, different types of bigotry or other types of things like that in the speedrunning community. Mm -hmm. I've done so in the Banjo community, the Pokemon community. Um, I recently spearheaded the change uh, that took place in the Pokemon community that did separate it into these different categories so that we could better manage the, the drama that was going on within yeah. it, um, which is why I ended up becoming elected as a leader in those communities, because those people know that I'm someone that they can trust because I've always been there fighting for them. Um, I, I am also a, 
how do I describe this? Uh, Speedrun community support for the Hollow Knight community, Mm -hmm. which we aren't technically a moderator, but we're there to help resolve community conflicts. Um, This is a team that was recently founded, like within the last couple of weeks. So uh, we're still kind of getting established and trying to handle some conflicts that were going on before we were involved in it. Um, So I'm... I manage that. I manage uh, Pokemon communities. Uh, I also moderate a couple of other smaller discords, such as for the game Evergate. Um, Evergate is a really, really cool puzzle platformer. Definitely recommend checking it out. The speedrun is pretty cool, but it's not as active anymore as it was at first. No, I mean, that's, I, think- I, I was just going to say, like, I, and that was kind of an open-ended question. I wasn't sure what but you you took it and you gave me some really specific things which i think a thing that might be hard to grasp especially if someone's watching and maybe they only participate in a few smaller communities um you know some of these games are really popular pokemon's very popular and when it scales up to a certain point it becomes hard to manage especially at a a volunteer level right and so mm-hmm. when people step up and and do this it it helps so so much uh you know a while back i had uh maxi lobes as a guest and maxi was on the ground floor of when resident evil 2 remake speedrun happened which was a big you know explosion in, in horror speed running for a bit uh and that was that was difficult to manage and so i don't know i just i just say like like thank you people who moderate big communities especially when you take the effort to um to to mediate I think the way you've described it is really, really useful. Sometimes I hear people being like, oh, speedrun drama. I just want to get away from that. But I understand that. And sometimes it is the right decision personally. But we do want to have speedrun communities. They can be a lot of fun. And so yeah. putting in that work to, to make them a better space is really important. Yeah, the the Hollow Knight community um, is very, very recently in sort of an upheaval right now mm. um, because there there was a prominent community member that was banned uh, a couple of days ago over... I, I can't get into the specifics, sure, but sure. It, was, it was extremely serious. And some people feel like that was unjust, but um, that, that sort of thing is really important. There definitely needs to be measures in place to handle situations that are potentially damaging to the community. And it's important that those people are also people that they can trust to make that decision. So it it is a very difficult position to be in, having to both be the bad guy and try to stay someone that people can trust. Yeah, no, it definitely requires um, I don't know a lot of different a lot of different hats uh, to all make it work well. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, let's okay. Let's let's get back to just we'll, we'll we'll move away from the very important and foundational community work, uh, back to the the speed running stuff. Uh, I'm going to get into some of the games we already mentioned. A few games, uh, and I think at the beginning we talked a lot about Blue Fire. Um, I did want to ask when it comes to your approach to speed running, you know, personally, do you feel like you have a particular uh, uh, mission statement or role that you fulfill? You know, you see yourself as uh, interested in routing, glitch hunting, uh, or that there's some other way or like, you know, w- when I take the time to speed run this game, I'm going to leave my mark on it in this way. Um, if I'm, if I'm early on into a run, for example, blue fire, mm-hmm. uh, I am pretty good at routing. So I, I do try to help as much as I can with putting together routes. Like I'm really good at, at looking what someone else has looking at what something else Hold on, brain. <laughs> I'm really good at looking at what someone else has put together and figuring out a better way to fit those puzzle pieces together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do try to contribute like that. But I think the most important thing that I do is I make tutorial videos for uh, new runners relating. That's that's mostly what I do on YouTube, basically. Um, for example, uh, one of my most recent popular videos is the True Ending Shade Skip, which isn't technically a really difficult trick, but it, it breaks it down in a way that a new runner uh, would be able to watch it and understand exactly what they're trying to do. And that sort of thing, um, I think, helps a lot of new people. I also, in general, have a lot of different resources with like screenshots and things like that. And I, I do try to train new runners as much as I can. When it comes to making tutorial videos, uh, do you feel like there is any uh, essential ingredients? Let's say someone's listening to this 
and they're like, you know, I have my niche game and I love my niche game and I want to make tutorial content for it to get other people into it. Uh, do you have any advice for them that you really need to include X or Y? Um, it's very important that you explain why something works, because if somebody understands why something works fundamentally, they'll understand what it is that they're trying to actually accomplish. Because if you just say you need to do X and then Y, it it might not actually help them understand what they're trying to do in that situation. So I think that in general, explaining that is important. Um, I've also done that, like, for example, in my my Pokemon guides, mm. for because I have a guide for Pokemon XY that explains every step of the route and exactly why we made the decisions that we do so that new runners are like, oh, okay, so this is why we don't do this other thing, even though that might make sense. I feel like my, my I don't know, maybe this is a sign I've been on Twitch for too long, but my, my immediate response to that is that the moral of the story is don't be a Twitch chat backseater. You know, <laughs> don't be like, do this thing, you know, have a conversation with the streamer like they're a human being. If they're really, you know, if you really want to talk about something, uh, so that's maybe, maybe always sound advice. Don't be a Twitch, Twitch chat backseater. I don't know how many people from my community are watching this right now, but I have a huge thing in my chat about backseating speedrunners. <laughs> So I, I usually tear apart anyone in my chat who has the, the nerve to backseat me. <laughs> that is that is the right term for it though. If you're coming into a speedrun stream and backseating, like that's really, really something. You know, I feel like I've yeah. seen so many streamers now who who will have something actually no, I think my favorite example was the the GTA streamer uh Joshimus has it set up so that if his chat bot sees the word why in a chat message it automatically just responds because it's faster <laughs> which i think is that's yeah. amazing i love that <laughs> so that's yeah that's that's one way one way to do it one way to handle it um all right let's let's dig into some some specific games that we already talked about about blue fire already handled that now i know hollow knight was a big we talked about you know hollow knight your favorite speed run uh favorite category i already asked about uh, how did you get into playing Hollow Knight in the first place? That's actually a really funny story. So I was I was watching PG, of course. I, I'm always in his chat. And then one day someone posted a grub emote, like the grub in the jar. And I was like, oh, that emote's kind of cute. I wonder what that's from. So I clicked it and it was Zephyros's emote. And at the time she was still an affiliate. Mm -hmm. She was a little baby streamer. And I looked at the game and I was like, oh my goodness, this game is gorgeous. And so I watched through a little bit of her VOD and I was like, this looks like a really good speed game. So I actually bought Hollow Knight with the intention of speedrunning it with inspiration from Zeph. So Zeph got me into Hollow Knight. Thank you, Zeph. <laughs> awesome. No, that's... And so, but initially you were... Initially you were speedrunning, I assume, on, on PC. I, so one of the VODs that you had given me and that I watched was the uh, the run you did for um for for frost fatales 2020 uh the the hollow knight all skills but you and then you know i i did watch it <laughs> and you mentioned in the vod <laughs> that you you ran it on switch and that you new know, versions on console were competitive and i'm i'm interested you know i feel like a lot of people you know if a game comes out on pc like everyone just goes to speed run it on pc uh, but i'm interested to hear assuming you started on pc what made you try it on different on different platforms that's actually a really uh a really great story so the hollow knight speedrunning community used to have a lot of people that would come into our general chat and be like oh uh i'm playing on console does that mean i can't keep up with pc or they'll be like oh no i'm on console it's too slow and we actually had a console specific leaderboard under miscellaneous um, and we kept trying to, you know, refer people to that, mm -hmm. but they were just like, oh, it's hidden. I don't care about it. And they just wouldn't run the game. So as an experienced PC runner, I went through every category, routed the current patch versions of the categories and ran every category to try to inspire new people to run it. And that Frost Fatales run actually did also bring in a lot of new console runners. And we actually have a decently active console community now. So, um... And we also moved it away from MISC into the main leaderboard. I was going to so. say, it's not still under miscellaneous, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, that's good. Um, but all of those things combined brought a lot more attention to the console side, and we have a lot more people that um, inspire other runners to run console now, so it's not really like this taboo thing like it was for a little while. Now, 
when you're running on a PC, though, I I assume you're you're still running with um, with a pad. Are the primary differences then having to do with things like loads and frame rate and stuff? Uh, yeah. So the IGT for Hollow Knight is completely broken. Uh. I have a screenshot <laughs> of uh, a 56 second 106 percent run, <laughs> for example. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Very good. What a gamer. <laughs> and uh, so. Um, we have to use the loadless timer on PC, which you obviously can't use on console. Mm-hmm. And also the loads are significantly longer. Um, so there's a lot of different little things, plus the current patch, obviously. So you can't down patch to patch 1221, which is the optimal speedrun patch. So it's just best that it's it's divided for people for fairness. Um, but for the Switch Pro Controller, the fact that the buttons are opposite from the Pro Controller to the Xbox One Controller, that is definitely uh, a thing that I have to adjust to. <laughs> Accidentally pressing the wrong no and yes and stuff like that. <laughs> I was never a Nintendo kid growing up, and so whenever I uh, whenever I emulate any sort of Game Boy or anything like that, I 100% map A to A and B to B on an Xbox controller, <laughs> <laughs> and I have no regrets That's about fair. it. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, no, it, it is funny. I, I, I've, I've wondered if I would ever encounter someone who also just had, you know, extensive thoughts dealing with this problem of B and A. <laughs> And I guess X and Y too, right? Because they're also flipped as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I remapped all of those buttons. It's just whenever you need to say yes or no, the game still checks A or B rather than the buttons you have it mapped to. So those are very easy to mix up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So, you know, besides the, uh, the, you know, the all skills run that I watched, I mentioned earlier about watching the the Pantheon 5. Now you already explained what that was, uh, but I did want to, ask did you was this a situation where by the time you started running this game uh was that before or after uh this dlc had launched um so i started i started playing hollow knight i bought hollow knight um during a steam sale right after the grim troop patch that we speed run on was released so mm. patch one two do one the speed run patch was my casual patch um and then the, the lifeblood patch came very shortly after that, which is the patch that patched out all of our speed tech. And when that happened, I was basically just like, oh, I'm just not going to upgrade my game. <laughs> so I just kept that as my original 1221 patch and then like copied those files and then updated whenever I started running God Home. So I was a little bit ahead of God Home. Um, I think that the God Home DLC came out uh, a little bit before I started running 106%. So I basically went up to the God Home patch and did the Pantheons casually while I was learning the 112 speed run. Okay, okay. I you know a thing I wanted to ask with uh, with a category like um, like Pantheon Five, I assume that's kind of a effectively a, a new game plus category. So I assume there's a lot of um, routing space around it, right? Like in terms of what a, what a toolkit you would bring to that for the boss rush. Uh, for the Pantheon 5 speedrun, generally we try to do what we would do in a normal 112 speedrun. So uh, you would use the same charms and things like that. Uh, however, an actual Pantheon of Hollow No speedrun, uh, they run a completely different build that focuses on Fury. Uh, so, because Fury is, is super, super fast, but obviously very risky in a 112 speedrun where you've done a four hour run already and now, <laughs> you're, <laughs> now you're trying to like not die at the end. That would be that would be painful. That would be sad. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us have messed with uh, routing it. Like myself and Monsta have done a little bit of practice with Fury, and uh, we've both come to the same conclusion separately that that is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, then I, I know this game. I mean, at least looking the the perception from looking at your speedrun.com profile. I know you said you don't always submit a lot of runs, but certainly the perception is that like Hollow Knight has been a big speed game for you. You said it's your favorite. What do you have future plans for Hollow Knight right now in terms of I want to go to this category or revisit this thing I did previously? Uh, I really would like to get top three back in 112. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, All skills was my first ever category. It would be nice to go back to it, but I don't, I don't know how dedicated I feel to the shorter categories. Mm-hmm. Um, 
True ending is a really fun category that I would like to go back to. True ending is the category, it's basically any percent, but you get the Radiance ending, uh, which is the uh, Dream No More ending, if you're familiar with it in that way. Um, I'm not, but I'm, I'm sure other people <laughs> will know. They'll know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that, that category is probably one of the most technically demanding in Hollow Knight speedrunning, so I would I would love to improve that time, because my time isn't, it doesn't match my current skill level. <laughs> I think my time is like a 116, which is like 10 minutes slower than world record. I, I think I could do a little better. I think I'd get around a 110, maybe. Do you feel like there is a lot of um, overlap between categories? Because I wonder if this is the sort of thing, especially after doing you know 100 percent or the 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 100 percent category for so long you know would you do you feel like maybe that's what you were just saying that if you went back to something like all skills like your skill level is going to have risen you know and i want to say an yeah. easy pb but there is certainly <laughs> potential yeah there's also a lot of new routing since the last mm. time that i ran these categories uh so all skills is going to have a tournament coming up soon i think it's going to be starting really soon um so a lot of people are running it right now and they're finding of course whenever a lot of people run a lot of things they find like tiny improvements or new route ideas or things like that so i, I think that yeah if i did go back there would just be a lot of overall potential to be able to improve it so you do plan to participate in the all skills tournament oh no 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 i no? have a lot of other things coming up <laughs> okay <I do> <laughs> I was just, I was curious, I, 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 you know, I've mentioned several times now, I usually do not participate in very big speedrunning communities. And so the closest I've come to being involved with communities large enough to have a tournament is like Vice City or something like that. Um, and so generally speaking, would you, would you be interested in that kind of thing? Like, how do you feel about tournaments as part of being a, a speedrun community? Like, are, is that an effective thing to have? Or is it like, nah, I'm never really going to be a part of these? It, it's kind of situational for me because I, I mean, obviously I speedrun for a living, mm -hmm. so I need to focus on what's the best for both my content and long-term type of goals and things like that. Um, but sometimes it depends. I, I considered participating in the any percent tournament that they had a little while ago, um, but decided to back out of it just because I'm not good at any percent turns out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh all skills i would have liked to it's just there's a lot a lot going on right now um so one of the things that i'm doing i don't know if you follow keys around on twitter he's starting to organize a marathon um and i'm gonna be involved in helping organize that as well so i decided that it's best that i don't put too many eggs in my basket right now sure no absolutely yeah is there is there i say i did i after interviewing jay hobbs i filed keys on on twitter i'm gonna just I'm gonna speak loudly i have not seen any talk about this marathon are the details public yet i mean you can feel free to yeah, plug yeah, it yeah. if they're public he had posted it on his Twitter asking for people who have experience with cancer directly. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned earlier in the interview that I uh, I was adopted when I was eight. My mother died of cancer whenever I was very, mm -hmm. very young. And so I was orphaned because my dad isn't part of my life. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I have a lot of experience with uh, close family members having cancer and things like that. So um, obviously that was something that I felt compelled to be part of and help with. Um, because all of the organizers, all of the people involved in this marathon um, and organizing this marathon are people who have been directly impacted by cancer. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's really cool. And I'm glad that he's putting that together. No, absolutely. That's, I mean, that's cool. Like I, 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 I <laughs> my, I, my ears are open. I, I'm now going to his Twitter page. Is there, is there any, any details yet? Or is this just sort of on the planning stages? Yeah, it's still in the planning stages right now. Um, okay. I thought it was a pinned tweet. Hold on. Yeah, I know. I'm stream. I'm I'm scrolling down the page too, and I'm not seeing anything. That's fine. Well, I mean, I guess you'll, if folks, if you're interested, you'll just have to follow keys, Ron. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably post about it. I guess it's not his pinned tweet anymore. All right. Well, anyway, we we will we'll find that. We'll find that. Maybe we'll share it. We'll we'll go from there um let's let's keep on now so i actually did want to come back to a game that you mentioned earlier uh which is evergate uh i did go and watch your uh, frost of towels run of uh, evergate and uh one of the things that jumped out at me 
uh, is that very much like uh, Blue Fire, it sounds like you had some. Uh, I don't think demo speedrunning, but actually uh, like alpha beta testing speedrunning with this game. Can you talk about how that came together and what you did? So those specific developers wanted speedrunners to be their testing team. So myself and a couple of other Hollow Knight runners and uh, a Metroid runner, um, Oshi, who I don't remember what she ran before, but she was also a speedrunner. And basically the entire team was composed of people who've speedrun games before because they wanted their game to feel good to speedrun mm -hmm. uh, and also be technical without being too technical. So... Um, we we put in a lot of input throughout the entire process of making that game. And I think that for that marathon, the run that I did was actually on a beta patch. I don't think it was the full release yet. Yeah, I believe that's right. From listening to the the, the commentary and you know you were answering questions, I think with your your uh, your commentator uh, that at that time the 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 game was not actually launched yet, which is which is pretty cool yeah. that you know that you could you could do that there. Um, once the game launched, uh, did did it end up changing a lot from what you had speedrun as a beta, or was it? I mean, because of your feedback and ended up being you know pretty pretty uh, consistent because of their desire to include speedrunners in the process. Yeah, if I remember correctly, not very much actually changed uh, from the patch that I ran. I think they just basically cleaned up a lot of stuff, made it look a lot better. Um, improved some of the ways that the game feels and stuff like that. There's not really a whole lot of glitches in that game. Um, it's a very, very solid game overall. And they put a lot of work and love into it. I think they did a really great job. One thing that was really neat to me, uh, and you mentioned this several times during the, the VOD, was that you... that. Uh, that the... You know, it's a PC game, but there are sort of um, uh, substantively different approaches to running it using a uh, controller or mouse and keyboard such that really you know there, there are separate play styles separate games separate categories um do you have a did you have a preference for one or the other i i, I you you gave very good answers in that vod for how they're different but i don't know if you necessarily had a preference uh yeah i'm a controller player 100 mm. <laughs> percent um I, I'm not very good at... I think it has to do with the fact that my hands are the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, but playing with a keyboard just doesn't... Like, I can't move them as fast in that angle, if that makes sense. Like, from the, the downward angle touching a keyboard, um, it's a little easier for me to move my hands when they're facing upward. So controllers just feel a lot better. Like, keyboards... Um, I, I feel like I can't do the inputs, if that makes sense. Like, it's just too tight. <laughs> Keyboard is a very weird creature. I, 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 you know, I do a lot of casual stuff, so I end up going back and forth between mouse, keyboard, and controller, and I, I constantly go back and forth between which I think is easier in my hands, which is probably just a sign of, of age more than anything else. But, uh, but it's definitely unusual. Um, now, it sounded like earlier you indicated that maybe perhaps because the game is so so rock solid. Um, that there hasn't been too much activity since launch for this game, or is there is there has is this an active game right now? Um, do you have any future plans for it? Uh, there are a couple of active runners. I believe that it was just showcased on a GDQ Hotfix show not mm. too long ago, and uh, we also just got a new eighty percent or no, a new one hundred percent world record like a couple of days ago. So. It's not dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not dead. We we do have a couple of active runners, but it's not as active as it was whenever the game was first released. Um, personally, I feel like the game might be a little bit too technical for me. Um, but like I said, I am a moderator in both the server and the leaderboard, so I'm still active in the community, and I still care about the future of the game. Yeah, and I mean, here's the thing too. Like I, I. To me, a speedrun not being active at the moment is in no way a mark of shame. <laughs> I think I'm I'm the moderator of like twelve leaderboards, and let me tell you, I haven't verified a run in months. So, <laughs> like, and that's okay because I'm happy to be here for the next person who comes along to any of those games uh, and wants to run any of them. Like that's that is totally okay. Yeah, that's that's the mentality to have. I think for sure. Um, all right. One last thing I wanted to check in on was uh, was Pokemon speedrunning, and I know uh, you know you talked a little bit about how you transitioned from Shiny Hunter to uh, Pokemon speedrunner, and uh, I know you know, your I think your profile has like um, 
one of the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and then you had done, of course, you mentioned the VOD of the, the Frost Fatale's Shield Sword finale. Um, Pokemon Spirit Island, there's probably a lot to do. Uh, what is your favorite sort of thing to do in Pokemon Speed Running? What, what, what has appeal for you? I mean, besides just loving the game. So I'd, I'd be curious how that manifests in speed running. One of the things that I really love in Pokemon speedrunning, um, one of the reasons that I like doing it, and the reason that I also run Generation 6 and up, mm -hmm. is that um, Generation 6 and up, there's no RNG manipulation. So mm -hmm. you basically look at the stats of the Pokemon that you have, and you have to determine your plays based on those stats. You need to know what X items to get, which setups to use, for example, Sword Stance, Leer, etc., whatever, whatever stat-altering stuff, and... Um, Basically, that to me is the coolest aspect because you're you're playing the game um, in a more freeform way. Like there's a route, and you have a general idea of what you need to do, but those those plays change based on, uh, say, if you get a Halucha that has like horrible attack, uh, you're gonna have to play differently than if you got like a really good attack Halucha. And I think that that adds a lot of depth to new gen Pokemon speedrunning. Now, do you? Because I guess my my concern upon hearing that is that at, at a certain point of optimization, you would be inclined to reset at certain points if you didn't get the stats that you wanted. But am I hearing from you that either A, you know, you don't care and you'd rather enjoy playing the game or that, that B, it's still possible to make plays in such a way that even if you don't get the particular stats you want at one point, you can still have a great run. Yeah, so for the sake of a marathon, um, it is always possible to finish a run. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no situation where you wouldn't be able to just continue. Um, but there's a certain point. I would say for Pokemon X, the ceiling is probably uh, getting a sub-350. At that point, it becomes very, very difficult. For a point of reference, um, my PB in Pokemon X is 345, uh, which is about three minutes slower than the world record. Me and the world record hit the same optional and lost the same 50 seconds. Uh, so all of that time that I lost was either to RNG or bad movement or what have you, but it was mostly RNG. For for another point of reference, I lost a minute before the Halucha split, which is around 50 minutes into the run. So that's how much RNG time you can just lose to either encounters or uh, other types of stuff like that. So, I mean, it does get a little bit frustrating at a high level, but I think that any average runner would still have fun uh, mm. running most Pokemon games. No, I mean, that, that's that's good to hear. Like, I definitely feel like when I hear people talk about, um, you know, speedruns with elements of randomness, the appeal I often hear, and they, this is also to the, the truth for randomizers, is that you like the mechanics and you want to have an opportunity to interact with those and dice rolling is an easy way to keep that fresh and interesting. Um, actually, on that note, do you? I feel like some of these games. Does Hollow Knight have a randomizer? Am I imagining that? Yes, we just ended a huge rando tournament. Oh. Tournament. We have a huge rando community. Hmm. Um, if you're in the official Hollow Knight server, we have entire sections dedicated to just like the randomizer community. And there's a little bit of overlap between speedrunning, um, but rando really is like its own thing for mm -hmm. Hollow Knight. In fact, we have probably one of the most developed modding communities that I've seen. We have mods for anything that you can imagine. It's really, really cool. Now, do you do you stream a lot of Hollow Knight Rando? Is that something that you do, or? Yeah, it it depends. If I feel like doing Hollow Knight content, but I don't feel like doing runs, mm -hmm. I might do a Rando, for okay. example. the The universe of what what games have randos has expanded so dramatically, and it's really neat because I. I I have not done any randos myself, but to be able to take a favorite game and you know to mix it up just seems cool. As I mentioned earlier, a few weeks ago, I'd interviewed Jay Hobbs, and Jay Hobbs was just living the high of life with Kingdom Hearts Two randomizer, <laughs> uh, and so now, now, now I have to remember to you know to ask about that to actually do a better job of, of including that. Do, does something like and I know. Something like a Hollow Knight randomizer probably at least has appealed to you on account of your interest in Hollow Knight. Do you have any general feelings about randomizers and, you know, sort of their adjacency to speedrunning? Uh, for me, it depends on the type of game. Like, if the game itself is well designed, then a rando is going to work really, really well. Um, 
Not really sure about the connection to speedrunning. I do see that a lot of speedrunners do get into rando because it allows you to do a lot of cool skips that you wouldn't get to do in a normal run. Um, so that can be really appealing to a speedrunner. Uh, but I've also seen a lot of people in the Hollow Knight community get into speedrunning because of randomizer because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I, I like doing these skips. I like learning these skips. So they're like, oh, maybe I can actually do a speedrun then. <laughs> maybe I can handle it. Because I feel like that's one of the things that holds back a lot of casual players. Because um, they see speedruns and they're like, oh my goodness, this person is a god. <laughs> and they get intimidated. And really, it's just a lot of practice, a lot of work, learning the skips. And really, almost anyone can speedrun. So I think that rando is that gateway. I like that idea. I have not heard anyone express randomizer as a potential gateway for speedrunning. Because certainly, I've heard people talk about the uh, the mental obstacle of I just watched the world record runner. There's no way I could ever do that. I'm not even going to start. But mm. you know, randomizer is that vehicle that you could play the game a lot and. Maybe you're not going to wake up and say, let me become the world record holder of a deeply competitive game, but you're going to have a much more experienced take on, is speedrunning this game right for me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write that down, actually. Is this, this is one of the fun things of doing a speedrun in your series, is that uh, over <laughs> time... Uh, you get to like evolve your script because you encounter all sorts of fun ideas. Uh, I can actually offer two great examples please. of two yeah. runners like that. Um, H.C. Wesker is a runner that started out doing rando and came up with a lot of really interesting strats that ended up impacting 106%. Um, and then Top Hat Luke is another person who was really into rando, uh, started getting into 106 speedruns and came up with a reroute that saved almost a minute in the speed run in 106. So those are two people that I, I definitely think need to be shouted out in that situation um, because they they actually did change the run pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. That's that's really cool. That's, I yeah. you know, another speed run cliche is that, you know, you get a fresh set of eyes, you discover mm -hmm. more stuff. We've already said that on the pod, but to specifically have that set of eyes come through, uh, you know, a vehicle like a randomizer, um speaks to specific approaches right it's not i mean truly every person is unique and will have a unique perspective yeah. but the randomizer perspective is also you know one of those elements mm -hmm. all right let's let's start to wind down the formal part of the podcast of course the way this is structured is that you know i usually aim for about 90 minutes of questions like these and then we'll do some live q a folks if you are if you're watching live with us uh you know think about some questions you want to have one of the things I do is I get a question from my previous guest for my next guest to add some connective tissue to the interview series. Uh, so my previous guest was Crash Bandicoot speedrunner Rico. Uh, and Rico had this question for you, which was, uh, what factor of a speedrun makes you want to learn it? Like, let's say you watch a speedrun. And you're saying like, wow, that movement is great. I got to learn this. Or wow, those uh, those clips are great. I want to learn this. Is there something like that for you? Uh, for me, I really love combat in speedruns. So if I see a boss fight or a quick kill that looks really cool, uh, for example, that's part of why I want to run Super Metroid because some of the boss quick kills are, are really, really cool. And uh, that sort of stuff really appeals to me and part of why I, I would want to run those kinds of games. No, that's that makes question. sense. That's, that's, that's good. No, I, you know, I was really, cause I, I feel like my, my answer would have probably been something like, like clips. Like I, again, I, I run old junky 3d games, love clipping through doors, stuff like that. Uh, but to really focus in on the combat makes sense too. After watching, you know, you, you play hollow Knight a lot. It's just cause the combat in that game is emphasized. I think compared maybe relative, would you say that's correct that the combat in hollow Knight is emphasized relative to other Metroidvanias? Yes, for mm. sure. There, There is 46 total bosses in the game. Mm. So it, it's definitely a lot more bosses than your average indie game. <laughs> sure. Well, in that case, I need uh, from you a question for my next guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is. There are speedrunner. The oh. question does not have to be about speedrunning. Uh, you know, I've had questions about music tastes, general gaming questions, could be anything. If you need to take a moment, that's okay. Uh, but if you have an idea, 
Okay, if, if anyone who knows me, if I ha if I have to ask someone a question about something personal that may or may not be related to speedrunning, I am a huge sugar addict. What is your favorite dessert? Oh, all right. <laughs> now I I do give the spoiler here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna DM you uh, next week's guest here, who will be answering your question. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know who that is so yeah. all right that should be fun that should be fun i'm looking forward to that um what what upcoming games now i i'm gonna start off with the obvious one what okay i'm gonna ask what upcoming games are you interested in and also i mean i guess maybe talk about silk song because like i have to right <laughs> Yeah, um, so I think Silk Song is the last game on my list that is coming up that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Blue Fire had a lot of build up. I was looking forward to running it. Um, Tech, the other moderator, and I decided that we were going to be leading the community um, during the demo era. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we were already like putting a lot of work into preparing the community and things like that. So now that that's finally done, I think that Silk Song is the last last big game i'm excited for um so the uh we haven't gotten a lot of news lately do we <laughs> so know we, when it's coming no okay we, we know okay. basically nothing <laughs> um so i mean like if we're gonna talk about silk song without spoiling too much mm -hmm. stuff there is some stuff i'm a little worried about um in an interview the devs said that they um they basically scaled the game around Hornet's larger size compared to the knight. Okay. Um, and also, uh, it showed that she can grab walls. So um, that's going to be interesting to see like how uh, how that impacts the different skips that we can do in the run and things like that. Um, we really don't know a whole lot, though. I'm, personally, I'm hoping for something similar to the Hollow Knight spell. Um, because the spells make the combat in the game, especially in the speedrun, mm -hmm. super, super fun. Because we can basically just, like, uh, one-shot all of the bosses, like Galeon, for example. A lot of people are very surprised whenever they see stuff like that, because Galeon, you just shriek him three times, and he's dead during his scream. And there's a lot of bosses that we kill like that. So I, I love that. Uh, and I hope that that doesn't change. <laughs> Interesting. Now, and it's interesting to me, you know, knowing so little about uh, about Hollow Knight, I was able to pick up from from watching your VOD that you know the Hornet character is uh, someone you you fight at least. I know that in the first Hollow Knight, and now is going to be the playable character uh, for for Silk Song, which is cool. I don't know. I, I like it. I I am here to stand games which have sequels starring different characters. I I grew up with Halo Two and Metal Gear Solid Two. And Arbiter and Raiden are great. Thank you. Welcome to my TED Talk. Um, <laughs> besides Silk Song, is there anything else I, that, that you wanted to to shout out as a, being an upcoming game you're interested in? Um, I, I don't think so. Like, I, I really do just kind of stay in my little bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and unless I'm approached by a dev or a friend, uh, I usually don't really reach outside of the communities that I'm involved in. Because, I mean, I play such a heavy role in so many of the communities I'm in, and there's a lot that I have going on. So it's a lot harder for me to, to actually like go out and try to get involved in other games and things. All right, so winding, continuing to wind down here, and I did want to ask, you've already, uh, in specific context, shouted out a, a few people uh, and, you know, for specific roles. I wanted to give you an opportunity to specifically shout out uh, a person or multiple people who you feel like should have more eyeballs on them. If you could, if you could will it that more people would watch so-and-so, who would that be? Oh boy. Okay. Um, so Frozen Flygon, um, she is a leader in Frame Fatales and an absolutely beautiful person. Um, she is a Celeste runner and I've watched her grow from being a Twitch chatter who was like, I don't know if I'll ever actually speedrun to being like an absolute legend. Mm -hmm. So I love Frozen Flygon. Um, Blue, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is the, the young young uh, Hollow Knight runner who on his own volition put together this huge marathon that we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks. Um, trying to think who else uh, I think is really, really great and deserving of attention. Go ahead, take a second. No rush. <laughs> mm. 
if I were to go to the the Pokemon community, mm-hmm. there's a couple of new people um, who've been putting a lot of work into runs. I'm really glad to see Echi get partner. Echi is definitely someone that I would I would point out. Um, he's grown a lot recently, and I'm really proud of him. Um, there's a new runner in uh, the Auras community named Truly, who's been doing really really well. Um, let me see what their their full Twitch name is. It's truly spelled true l y twenty eight. Um, they they've been getting pretty good time, so I'm definitely keeping an eye on that runner. Cool. No, I mean that's a lot of. I mean, it's. I think it's good almost too that you you covered you know some of the different bases in terms of highlighting you know people who are new, people who have uh, recently experienced a lot of growth, but you know hopefully still still uh, uh, earning what they deserve because I think. Two, the people that you're mentioning are also the people who are putting in community work as well, which, again, I always yeah. like to highlight. I feel like it's easy to be like, ah, yes, this person has a top time, but, um, <laughs> you know, I like rewarding the people who are like, let me organize, let me uh, get events together, let me, uh, you mentioned Frozen Flygon involved with, um, you know, with, uh, what's the name, the, what's the group that puts on Frost Fatales and Flame Fatales? Is it? A frame. Frame fatales. It's frame, frame. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I know the names of the events, but there's a general like parent organization name. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, where should people find you if they're looking for for MRA content? Where do they go? I am mostly on Twitch. Uh, my name is spelled the way that it is on screen. Um, that is also my name on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, we do things like escort mission. I do a lot of tutorials and things like that. But it's mostly leftovers, like, you know, run highlights and things like that from my Twitch channel. Um, I mean, that's that's really about it. All I do is speedrun. I speedrun a lot of different games. Uh, currently, it's Blue Fire. I'm probably going to be doing Blue Fire for a really long time until we finally get some Silk Song news. So we'll we'll see how things develop. No, I, you know, I've been I've been enjoying. I I I, I admit I'm always more of a 3D person than a 2D person. Um, and the the movement, the wall jumping, and everything in Blue Fire is really fun to watch. So. Uh, you, you, I, I, you know, I, I keep East coast business hour life. And so I am typically working during the day and it's often a perfect time to put on a stream, like someone playing blue fire, uh, you know, in the background. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I definitely appreciate that. And of course I put the links uh, in chat if you're here with us now, so you can throw follows at those. If you are watching or listening after the fact, uh, on you know YouTube or Spotify, iTunes, uh, you'll be able to find all of Emray's links uh, in the description. Again, whether that be uh, in YouTube or Spotify, uh, Emray, thank you so much for giving me all this time. Well, thanks for having me. It was a good, it was a good, a good interview. <laughs> now, I I do need one more thing from you before I end the formal part of the podcast which is that I'm going to use a cheesy catchphrase, like let's boost on out of here. Uh, and when I do that, I'm going to ask you uh, to give me your best rocket engine noise. Oh, no. I don't know <laughs> if I can do that. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you'll get a shot here. I mean, are you ready to take your, take your shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so cringe, but okay. <laughs> okay. Folks, thank you so much for listening. Let's boost on out of here. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. So that ends the formal part of the podcast. Uh, folks, if you have questions that you would like Emre to answer live, uh, speak now or, or forever hold your peace. Usually I try to fire up. Okay. So what's, what's going on? Do you mind if I ask, uh, what sort of stuff you have on your shelf back there? Can I, is that, 
Okay, so uh, before I became a speedrunner, I was huge into collecting video game paraphernalia. Mm. So as I mentioned, I'm a huge Pokemon Black fan. Uh, I own all of the in Pokemon cards, the full art special edition. I also own the gold Reshiram and Zekrom. Um, the vase that I have back there, um, I'm quarter Japanese. Okay. And that is a Japanese vase that's like the only heirloom that I have mm -hmm. from my dad's side of the family. Um I also have the entire collection of the Death Note Black series, just because I think it looks really good on a shelf. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good reason. Yeah, most of it's just like collectors' items and things like that. No, that's cool. I, I you know I feel like I I grew up in a, in a household that was a lot of hoarders, and so I I tend to re to resist it, but I've been like come, come around on it where I'm like, you know what, having a shelf with some nice things. Uh, is not such a bad way to be really uh yeah. you know it's it's all right i still have i think i still have like like gundam wing to, like action <laughs> figures i think it's like the one thing that i've held on to uh That's from, cool. from when i was a kid all right mm -hmm. chat is uh there oh i hear it. yes 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 please leon now is the time now is the time for q a throw throw him in All right. Well, it must be important. If there was someone that you would want to see me interview, do you feel like you've mentioned a bunch of names? I don't know if there's any of them are floating to the top. I mean, I have written down some of them already, but I'd be curious if you would single out anybody as as a future interview guest. Have you interviewed Echi? Because I, I, I have mean, not. I, would... I did just follow Echi. I don't know if it was you or somebody else retweeted Echi about getting partner. And I was like, oh, this person seems cool. And, you know, I, I always try to get a sense of who people are. And I spend a lot of time on Twitter. So, like, I just follow them. So, yeah, no, I have followed Echi. Um, yeah, he, I mean, he's someone that, like, was in the community for a little while before I was aware of him. And then um, he's actually done a lot of work uh, with Generation 4 mm -hmm. and, uh, the modern Pokemon games like Pokemon Shield, Sword and Shield. So, I mean, I would love to see like where he came from and his perspectives on things. No, that sounds good. I've, I've been, I've been trying to slide into the business email of a few Pokemon runners and I've not had too much <laughs> success yet, which is fine. No one is required to come on my stupid podcast. That is okay. I do not hold crushes <laughs> against anyone. Um, but no, that, that would be very cool. Um, all right, Leon asks, uh, what are your opinions on music during live streams? That is a, a difficult question just because of the fact that it covers legal matter. Right, um, yeah, that's, that's that's a very broad question. I'm not sure if that was about, you know, certainly the legal side of things has been hot topic recently and then even before that you know i feel like there's a whole <laughs> there was a nature of discourse about when you speed run do you do it with you know your personal music or the game music or whatever but um yeah i don't know if you want to avoid the legal stuff by all means i'm i i don't know <laughs> especially doing it as your day job i feel like puts it in a different perspective right because of the liability that comes with it and being attached to your yeah. income um yeah um, so my actual perspective on it, like say you're, you're talking about game music and you're doing speedruns with game music in the background. I mean, that's fine. Personally, I like to have the, the normal game music though, just because it feels, I don't know, it feels more right to me. Maybe like, I definitely have the old boy mentality speedrunning because I mean, I've, I've been around for, for that long. Mm. So I have that mentality that like, you should be playing on the vanilla game. You should be playing with vanilla settings, including the music and things like that. Like, and I, I know that that's a very speedrun boomer mentality. <laughs> like a lot of people definitely do like to have their own music and that is valid. It's just not my thing. Now, do you, okay. So, it's interesting to me that you're you're saying that as the the speed run boomer mentality. To me, when it comes to recording runs, I feel like the the ultimate speed run boomer mentality is um, the desire for a completely clean gameplay recording. You know, devoid of any alerts, splits, cam, anything. You know, uh, mic audio. You wouldn't go that far. 
Yeah, no. Uh, so PG was definitely like that. <sighs> he didn't even face reveal until like what five years after he started streaming. Mm. So like he he was definitely a lot more like that. But he's grown to like the uh, the more popular aspects of, of speedrunning where you're using cam you're you have splits on the screen um alerts like he even has alerts now which he didn't have for ages <laughs> stuff like that so i mean i feel like even some of the old boys are starting to accept like uh that streaming is now like a very entertainment heavy mm -hmm. and uh industry and if you want to be successful you do have to accept some of that and make it fun for chatters yeah no it's it's definitely interesting i feel like there's been a lot of uh discourse recently um because of the interest in video game preservation and video game history uh you have people talking about speed run uh history as well and so you know i think you see folks i'm gonna i'm gonna call out i don't know call out's the right term here i feel like whenever i read omni gamer he's talking about this kind of thing where he's like you know if we had this clean stuff that would be really great all right chat suddenly arrived and so <laughs> let us start getting some of these chat. Remember, folks, if you have any questions, uh, we are on the front page of speedrun.com until uh, until 2 p.m. So please throw your questions in. Uh, Fretzel wants to know what your favorite dessert is. My favorite dessert is anything made of sugar. <laughs> anything. I, I love I love ice cream. I love cakes. I love cookies. I made cookies for Christmas, which I was really excited about. I get really excited over sweets. Uh, I, I'm someone that if I were to develop diabetes, like basically every time I talk to my doctor, I'm bracing for that impact of them telling me that I'm diabetic. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm, I'm totally prepared to accept. Uh, do you have a, a singular dessert though? Like, cause I, I you know, let's, oh. for example, I, I recently, I recently turned 33, sadly, and <laughs> uh, my favorite dessert is bread pudding, and my wonderful partner, Icy, who's here in chat, uh, made me a very nice chocolate and banana bread pudding. It was very good. If you're looking That's for a particular dessert, what's that dessert that you're going to ask for? Uh, oh, that's so hard though because I go through phases of craving stuff. Like, for example, two two weeks ago or something, I was like, "Babe, I want a pie," and he's like, "You want a pie?" And I was like, "Yes, I want a pie." So he went buy me a pie. <laughs> what, what kind of pie? What kind of pie was received here? What? Uh, he got me apple. I told him to get okay. me any fruit. Okay. okay. Um, I I think that. If I really had to pick, though, like, I, it would probably be some kind of cake. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I really just, I don't know. If we're going to keep it simple, okay. cakes are really good. Uh, Boston cream pie is delicious. It's a kind of cake. Um, All right. I, I, okay. I Go ice ahead. cream. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We can move on. Bucket Please asks, uh, do you think speedrunners should create entertainment outside of speedrunning to keep the games they run fresh um i'm curious how to interpret this question because i feel like the, is the freshness uh the game for everyone or the game for the runner which i feel like is two different questions maybe um you're you're, you're welcome to interpret that how you want though um so the way that i interpret it is uh Basically, whenever you're you're grinding one game, for example, um, it can get a little bit stressful. Uh, so taking small breaks to do casual stuff on the side or taking time to unwind is really important to like not get burnout on your speed game. And from the from the viewer perspective, um, I honestly, from my own experience as a, a Twitch streamer for so long, I think that viewers like watching the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> my my consistent uh, strongest numbers on Twitch. Like if we're gonna we're gonna cover that aspect, is whenever I'm running like 112 percent for an extended period. So I mean, maybe some viewers like to take breaks and watch other things, but I feel like the vast majority of viewers on Twitch really, they have like a couple of things that they really zero in on. And honestly, I'm like that too. Like I go through phases of only watching uh, Dark Souls 3, all bosses glitchless, and that's all I want to watch, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. 
No, the, the the habit of it and like what the basis of the habit is, is I think when it comes to viewing, very, very important, right? Because, um, and for a lot of people that is, you know, the game or the run or the category, you know, and, and that, it makes sense. And that's fine. You know, folks watch what you want to watch. <laughs> I'm never going to, yeah. there's, there's so much out there. I, I can, I can't possibly be like, no, nah, you should feel, you should feel bad about not having vegetables in your Twitch diet. Like, no, of course not. <laughs> yeah all right uh sir randy bob andy asks uh where where do you think a runner should look or where should a runner look for information about marathons for participation and watching uh they feel like there's difficulty knowing about what exists beyond you know the 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 big two of gdq and esa that is a really, really good question, and it's the reason that in the Pokemon speedrunning discords, we've added a channel called Marathons that announces upcoming marathons and also announces people that are in marathons mm -hmm. that are coming up. So um, the only other thing that I could recommend outside of, like, say, the Pokemon community is uh, follow follow a lot of these marathons on Twitter. Follow a lot of people that you know are really interested in uh, speedrun marathons. For example, Mr. Shasta, uh, TGH... Uh, people that that have a large following that are also active in marathons will likely often retweet or follow other different marathons. So um, try to try to find those people, and uh, you can find different marathons through that because they have like what Midwest Speed uh, Midwest Speed Fest, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, Calathon is the one that's run by Mr. Shasta. Um, what other what other marathon ser servers are I'm in? I'm in a lot of different marathon servers. They have one called UKSM, which is a UK based marathon. Um, Speed Docs also recently started doing their own marathon. Oh yeah, yeah, they started. Uh, they're going to be. Let me see. They just posted an announcement. They're going to be. Uh, doing a launch party marathon, so that's another one that's going to be coming up soon. But I, I think that advice that that Emery gave about following uh, following people who are into marathons, um, I, I know like I'm someone who tries to do a few online marathons besides because I don't want to just focus on already established popular things. Certainly, it is fun to submit to GDQ and try to do all that. But you know, having having smaller marathons is fun itself. You get to meet new people. People who are maybe uncomfortable with the idea of submitting to a big marathon get the opportunity and the experience to do marathons. Um, so it's just, it's good. Yeah, Oangus, uh, which, you know, now has sort of more stable ownership, um, is, is really, good. really long -thon. What's up? Really, 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 really long a thon. Uh, um, two of the founders of Really, Really Long a thon were the ones who took over Oangus. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that I don't know why I didn't think of really really long thought, but they're they're another marathon that's kind of been getting a little bit bigger and getting a little more traction. Uh, but yeah, Bucket's recommendation is really good. Yeah, the, and also too, uh, what's nice about Oangus is that they're doing a really good job. I feel like to make things very international and to offer lots of language support. Uh, I I I am being asked to help come in uh, and be like the English editor for a um, RTA week, which is a Japanese speedrun marathon organization, uh, is putting together a 35th anniversary FromSoft marathon where they want to actually, actually, I'm being a jerk saying that, where they want to get all of the FromSoft games, not just the Souls games, uh, you know, to have people from Armored Core, Kingsfield, etc., you know, uh, to, to do a, a anniversary marathon for FromSoft. And, um, and, but like, you know, the organizers are primarily Japanese speakers, uh, and even the ones who do have some English speaking, you know, they're like, Hey, PMC, do you want to do that? And so, you know, I don't know when more information is coming out about that, but you know, it is on Oangus that, 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 that marathon will be, you know, posting information, uh, to that website. So, um, That's I'm excited cool. to see that. I was a little concerned when I saw about, uh, you know, ownership changing hands for that website, but it does seem like, uh, it's in stable hands, which is great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The one of the people um, who are, are now in charge of the marathon is Cruel, 
uh, spelled C R O O L. He's a Pokemon speedrunner, and he's done a lot for the speedrunning community over the time that he's been part of it. He does a lot of different, like, uh, fun different routings of stuff. Like, he'll do like meme runs. Like, I have to beat this with only toxic damage or something insane like that. And uh, I, he, I'm really glad that he's one of the people that took over that site. All right, I need to circle back around to something that my my partner said in chat because it made me think. You you said you love anything with sugar in it, um, but do you like making desserts yourself? Are you a baker? Yes, I okay. used to be. Before I got sick, I, mm. I did it a lot more. Um, I used to make my own biscuits. I used to make my own uh, cakes and my own whipped cream and... A bunch of other crazy stuff because uh, i mean i was a vegetarian for a long time okay. so like i did a lot of different like vegetarian stuff where i like made my own things from scratch and stuff that was that i knew was vegetarian safe i'm not ve i'm not vegan but mm -hmm. vegetarian sure. um and being sick I, I ended up having to start incorporating meat back into my diet which was a really hard thing to do mm. um but uh, being a vegetarian and getting to experiment with stuff like that was really cool I, I like the I like the science aspect of baking. <laughs> like people don't realize how science heavy baking is, but it's it's pretty cool. No, it's really I you know my uh, I my 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 partner recently got a a stand mixer. She asked for it. I did not just say Aww. please please bake more, but she asked for a stand mixer, and I was able to get it and everything. And um and she's been doing we when we're not vegetarian by any means, but. You know, a lot of that stuff is fun and interesting, you know, just by itself without even, you know, anything else. And so it's been, it's been cool to see like, oh, I'm going to substitute this and find yeah. out what happens. It's usually pretty good. Sometimes <laughs> not, but usually. Yeah. Uh, all right. Bucket please is another question, which is what do you think community members of a game should add to their community to help grow the game run? So you're, if you're, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that question in, in the specific context of tutorial videos. But if you were to broaden the scope to anything to get more people to grow the game and run, uh, what would you do? My best advice is to yourself as a content creator, have a very welcoming community. Not only should you be um, just a, a fun, welcoming person yourself, but having a safe space in your community is really important not allowing different forms of toxicity or bigotry or anything like that uh will reflect well on the game itself and also hosting other runners that have the same type of safe space that you have um it's gonna make that network and and it's gonna grow and people are gonna realize like this is a community where i can feel welcome even if they're just a viewer mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that idea of um, creating the idea or the perception, because I mean, sometimes perception is truth. And I think that that holds for a group of, uh, you know, uh, streamers that work together to have similarly welcoming and inclusive spaces. Um, and so that I think, right, because you're it, well, only one person can do so much. But if you have that that network that sort of keeps things alive. Um, shows different levels of engagement and involvement. Uh, I think that really that really will do so much um, to see. If you're a viewer and you see two other people talking about it, uh, that really works. If I, if I were to share an anecdote, um, you know, again, I get involved with old junky games. Uh, I think it was last year, uh, KZ Fru discovered that there was a Miami Vice licensed game from like 2004, complete junker. Uh, but we figured out that if, at un like, uh, if you let the frame rate go up to like 120, you could just clip through a lot of doors. <laughs> and so, you know, from there, it's like, okay, well, what triggers are active when? You know, how short can we make this? Um, and the end result was that we ended up with a barely sub 10 minute run. Uh, a few wow. people that probably had never speedrun before did like thousands of attempts, you know, and, and that, that all happened because a few of us very publicly were decent people who just having fun discovering something in a game and that's you know how we ended up with a discord of like 40 people devoted to the miami vice game from 2004 and that's just you know i i, I think that right that, that i don't want to call it performance because that makes it sound pretend but making it accessible uh that sort of activity yes. is uh really going to do a lot to to grow the game 
going back to rando with hollow knight um i feel like that's one of the reasons that the hollow knight community overall has been a very successful game as a speed game um zero posted a screenshot zero is one of the super mods Mm -hmm. uh that hollow knight is one of the top games on speedrun.com right now and i think that one of the reasons for that is because of the fact that we overall uh by a wide margin have like leaders in our community that are very uh inclusive or lgbtq uh etc and also a lot of people in the community that are very inclusive uh even if they're not lgbtq uh so it definitely helps our perception and a lot of people know that they can feel welcome in our community no, that's great. I mean, the, the, when you were talking before about the idea of, you know, people in the community to act as mediators for for conflict, like, that's a lot of work. But, like, it sounds to me like it's hopefully paying off, you know, in terms of keeping it a great community to be a part of. Yeah, we're, we're doing our absolute best <laughs> to... <laughs> To try to try to handle different situations there obviously the reason that the team exists is because there were things going on mm-hmm. and i mean the hollow knight community as it as it happens whenever a community gets to be a certain size there's obviously going to be conflicts between members and things like that um in the case of the pokemon community it just happened to get way way out of control because the community was so long existing before we ever tried to do anything about it so the, that was a lot more complicated of a situation, and it took a lot more effort on the community's part to try to resolve everything. All right. We are just about wrapped up here for the end of our time slot. Uh, could you perhaps provide me with a raid target? Oh, okay. I mean, if you uh, have one, I can, I can find one. I, I, can, <laughs> I can find one. But I figured I wanted to give you the opportunity if you want to provide one. Hmm. Let me see who's live. I want to sure. I want to try to host someone who possibly is in the Hollow Knight community, possibly uh Oh, uh would you be interested in raiding Chalky Adam? He is a Hollow Knight true ending runner. Can you give me the um the the exact username either in the in the DM or in chat? Let's go see Adam. I would have never guessed that. I thought you said Chunky. Uh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad I asked. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, let's let's cue that up. Um, and yeah, thank you for, for again, for all the time. Uh, of course, folks, if you missed any part of this, certainly you can check the broadcast VOD right away. Uh, I'll be uploading this to, to YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, if you want to listen to it on your podcast app. Uh, it'll all be uh, available there. Um, yeah, and, and thank you, know, thank you, Amory, and, and thank you. I assume some of these folks might be people you know. So thank you so much for, for uh, you know, for, for listening yeah. and watching. Thanks again for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go and hang up on the call. Take care. Hopefully to see you around again. All right. Later. Bye.